Good morning, folks. You're looking at the departing active region with the Earth scale and watching the most minor of plasma surges and small jets from within, all still larger than the Earth. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and begin with the last 24 hours on our star. Very quiet, no flares or eruptions, with the bright sunspot group departing as well. We do have a coronal hole on the south entering Earth-facing position. And once that active region up north does indeed depart the Earth-facing half of the sun, you can see we're going to be right back to a blank circle. Let's go to the solar wind. When it drops too low in intensity, the cosmic rays get picked up as well. That's those glitches you see there as we drop to anemically low plasma pressure in geospace. That's why the magnetometer and KP index show that Earth's field is pretty calm. It is worth noting that as Earth connects to that coronal hole with interplanetary magnetic fields, the phi angle is shifting this morning. Generally good for a seismic uptick and it began yesterday with a 6.5 striking well out to sea south of Australia. Always like when they avoid humans. The storms in the United States continued raging overnight and the tornado watches have been flying already this morning early in the east. One more day until it moves offshore there. Best of luck. Let's go to a gorgeous birthday shot from Hubble. We're focusing on the southern Crab Nebula and showing the different spectral emissions near the central activity zone, drawing out the abundances of oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. In addition to the chemistry, it's the geometry of the feature that is of particular interest. The traced shape is indeed the Z or X pinch, the plasma universe beacon in the cosmos. Interesting story in that same vein, but from a quantum vacuum perspective. Fluctuations in the electric vacuum are related, correlated through entanglement as particles pop into and out of existence from the observer's perspective. The vacuum energy is functionally infinite relative to our comprehension of energy usage. Up next, it's the Global Climate Report for March. It is always amazing to me how the regions with the fewest sensors and fewest humans to monitor and check them always show up dark, deep red on here and we never see such extremes otherwise. Mix of hot and cold across the rest of the planet except for the U.S., which just had a miserable March. Home stretch here. An excellent study of the circumgalactic medium, covert matter. This plasma, dust, and gas represents an exceptionally difficult population to see and an even harder one to model appropriately in universal simulations. It is the hope of plasma universe physicists that the sparse material in the cosmos remains an enormous priority for observations because it is poised to answer an enormous fraction of the mass discrepancy without invoking mysterious new substances. Mysterious substances of the cool kind up next. I know Shungite, aka C60, is big with a lot of you. I see the comments and emails. Figured you might want to know that space has plenty of it, considering the relative scarcity on Earth. Last but not least, two brilliant women at MIT and Princeton are unfortunately not immune to the equal opportunity dark matter debunking here, claiming that point source identification of data in many models could be erroneous and that it could actually be dark matter annihilation. Ignoring for a moment the richness of dark matter scientists complaining about bad models, their model used only 500 sources, a puny number in astronomy and astrophysics. Basically, in their simulation, which is set up with those poor models, they injected artificial dark matter, of which they don't know the size or interaction profile of the particles, and when the simulation told them it was not dark matter but point sources, they got angry and wrote this paper. Seriously. If you are brand new here, I highly recommend the playlists on our channel page. Just click Suspicious Observers and scroll down. I recommend the Earth Catastrophe Cycle, where we take dozens of stories and evidence paths from the past, put them together in 23 episodes. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.